Hello, hello. This is Makisha Wright with um, Prayer Break. And I am going to do a teaching on the study of chiromancy. Um, I've been wanting to teach on this subject for a while. And the reason I've been wanting to teach on it for a while is because we're in a time where a lot of new age um, tactics, a lot of new age teachings is coming forth. Um, new age teachings and practices have been in the world for a long time. Um, we can look in scripture and we can see even back in the biblical days that um, new age practices was um was being done and these are things that the lord these are things that god have told us to stay away from but a lot of people still believe in those type of practices and what's going on now in the body of christ is these things are they're being mixed in they're being mixed in and for people who come into the um the gospel of christ the, the body of christ that don't know any better they may think that it's okay or if they've been practicing this type of stuff before they get born again and they don't have no one to teach them um, and tell them hey this is not right because even though you have the infilling of the holy spirit as you become born again there are still some things that you have to be taught and have to be told that it's wrong yes the holy spirit is a teacher it's, it's a teacher it, it, it will bring you into all truth but you still need to know that it's wrong and you know the reason why it's wrong and why god does not um approve of these type of practices so i'm gonna be here looking at my notes and we'll go through a few scriptures um i may have a part two to this this may just be um all that i do um we'll just kind of see how it go we'll kind of see we'll look at our time as we go on um I don't plan on getting just too, too deep into this, but I'm going to go, I'm just going to kind of go through it and give an overview of what chiromancy is. So chiromancy is another word for palm reading. Um, I'm going to read this definition I got here. Chiromancy is more commonly known as palm, palm mystery, palmistry, and is the reading of palms. It is said that the future is in our hands and skilled palmists can not only tell our future, but see what has happened in the past and what may be happening in the present time. Chiromancy has existed since ancient times as the study of the palms lines to tell a person's fortune. In the 17th century, palmistry was taught in universities in Germany and during the same period described as a form of witchcraft in England. It is believed that Julius Caesar read people's palms in order to find out their true intentions. For hundreds of years, kings, leaders, and philosophers have discovered answers to their questions by using palmistry. It is said that Albert Einstein has had his palm read while Alexander the Great and Napoleon Bonaparte studied palmistry. In recent years, chiromancy has been commonly used by specialists in psychic practices as it is said to be one of the most powerful skills to represent for fortune telling I mean foretelling um, a palmist will study the shape the size and lines and hands and the fingers I remember um, when I was in um, in grade school I was I was a, a child you know didn't know any better but it was it was it was coming for our palms to get read we were like okay this is your marriage line this is how many kids you're gonna have this is when you're gonna get married and we would just go around reading each other palms it was like we didn't think anything of it didn't know any better at the time and um thank god you know since then i've, I've been born again i've renounced everything that i've done whether i knew it was of god or not but but that's just how easy it is like if it was in school when i was in school just think what's in the schools now even with our children so it's not just for us as adults to know what's going on we have to also make sure we know what our children are being exposed to because our kids may not even know they may think it's simple they may think it's something um that's it, it doesn't hurt anything um that's what i thought 
But when we look a little deeper into this and we look into scripture, we'll understand how this is very dangerous. So chiromancy is just another word, another um, word for uh, for palm reading. And I also want to um, let you know with Cairo, um, we're going to look at the word Cairo. Okay. What does Cairo mean? Give me a minute. I'm going to my notes that I had. Um, that I had ideas on my notes. Um, Cairo comes from the Greek word where it means hand. This meaning is found in such words such as chiropractor. As you know, the chiropractor deals with the um, the back. Um, so these people that they, they, they what they use their hands. So that's what chiro means. It means hand. Let's look at Mansi, Cairo Mansi. Let's look at the um, second part of that word, Mansi. What does that mean? That means a form of meaning divination. Okay? So when you put those two together, Cairo deals with the hand. Mansi deals with divination. What is divination? Divination is the practice of seeking knowledge of the future or the unknown by supernatural means. This is where the body of Christ, where we have to separate the two. Because God, the, the, the true living God, Jesus that we serve, if you look at in the and read in the Bible, in the New Testament, all the miracles and, and things that Jesus did, that's a supernatural act, right? And Jesus had knowledge. He had wisdom of these people issues and what they went through. He knew what they wanted before they even opened their mouth and said anything. He already knew. That's a supernatural act. But the difference between what Jesus was doing was through a prayer line. And what I mean by that was through the Holy Spirit, was through God, because he, him and God are one. When you operate through divination and you're doing things from a supernatural standpoint and you're getting knowledge and you're getting you're foreseeing the future um, through divination, you're doing it through who? The enemy. Who is the enemy? Through Satan. And Satan has all other G-O-D-S, lower, lowercase G-O-D-S under him. He has other gods under him. And these are agents that Satan uses. So therefore, even if you go to someone and they read your um, your poem, they're getting things from the wrong source. It's from the, the wrong line. It's not the Holy Spirit. It's not a purified line. It's not filtered through the Holy Spirit where, where that's where Jesus will um, operate it in. Okay? So it's not that these individuals that operate with through chiromancy and palm reading, it's not that they don't they they may not see, they may see the truth, they may see what's really going on. They may can tell you some things that are true, but where they're getting their information is not from the Holy Spirit. You may say, Well, how does it work? If it's if it's evil, if it's demonic, and it's the truth, then what's wrong with it? It depends on the source. It depends on the source and depends on what realm they're pulling from. Let's look at a few terms and we'll kind of talk more about that. Okay. Um, I recently had a dream. This dream really, really, really kind of really pushed me into doing this teaching that I'm doing today. And the dream, I, I was, I walked into a room and I saw this individual. This it was a man. I didn't know this man. I didn't, I've never seen him before. And as I'm talking to him, something in my spirit didn't sit right. So the, the, um, the certain the spirits kicked in as a, that's, that's a gift from the Holy Spirit. The certain the spirits kicked in. I began to say, are you a psychic? And once I said that, it triggered something in this individual. And I could tell he got very upset. He began to manifest. And he ended up um, looking at me. And I don't know what other words were exchanged in the dream. I don't remember. But I just remember starting praying in my heavenly language. I started speaking in tongues. And I was warring in the spirit. And I was praying. And I began to say, um, I, I, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus and Holy Ghost fire. And he said fire. 
and I almost kind of withdrew back but I stood my ground in the power and authority of the Holy Spirit and I kept on praying I kept on speaking in tongues and kept on saying Holy Ghost fire and then the dream ended up ending this individual did not um, take control of me because I stood my ground in the authority but God was also just letting me know that with, with the enemy we think the enemy is not going to come <laughs> the enemy will come with the same tactics that you use even though greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world even though you have holy ghost power you don't back down from the enemy because the enemy will come with this type of um um intimidation the spirit of intimidation for you to back down and this individual, when I was warring the spirit in my dream, his eyes began to turn. When I called him out, he, his eyes began to, get, began to turn dark red. And a lot of times God will give you these dreams, dreams like this, because to let you know what you're warring against, to let you know what he's called you to do. These are, um, there can be deliverance dreams. Um, so I had a dream of a psychic and the psychic was not pleasant. The psychic um, did not love the Lord. Because anytime you say Holy Ghost fire, I'm like this, bring it, Lord. I love the Holy Ghost fire because the Holy Ghost fire will burn up things in you as a believer in Christ. It's not of him because God wants you to be what? More like him, to be more Christ-like. So if you're uh, if you're upset and you're getting upset because you're saying Holy Ghost fire, that means it's something in you that's not of God, but you don't want to release. And you know it's not of God. I have things in me that's out of the Lord, but I want God to burn up things in me. But if I was a psychic or if I was a, a, a medium operating on the dark side and getting my information from another place that's not of the Lord, I would feel some type of way too. I would retaliate back too. But you don't retaliate back when you know, okay, God, I want you to come in my heart. I want you to purify me. The psychics and these type of individuals don't want to be purified. They run from it. They fight against it. That's how you know this is not of the Lord. It's not of the Lord. So I was warm with this and I ended up waking up and I constantly prayed and I prayed in my, my um, heavenly language. And um, I was, you know, I was okay after that. I didn't just sit there and let the enemy try to defeat me. So I don't, um, you know, as God, as God continue to reveal to me about that dream, I, I, I'll continue to, um, to listen, to see what God is saying. But I also know this is a time where this type of stuff is creeping into the body of Christ. The, um, it, this, this type of stuff is creeping in. It's, it, it's, it's like people are just being passive with this. They, it's like, okay, well, I don't care as long as they tell the truth. They have knowledge. They know what I'm going through. They can help me. But in the end, it's not good. So I looked up with psychic. What does psychic mean? Psychic is related to the human soul or mind. A lot of people say psychics, um, a lot of research I've done, psychics and mediums are kind of the same thing. Um, they're different in, in a sense, but they're still kind of the same lines. You know, um, you have wizards, you have sorcerers, you have um, the psychics, you have mediums, you have um, soothsayers, all these type of um, names. But they all operate through the same realm, which is the demonic realm, the soul realm. So if I have lost a loved one, they can pull on those emotions in my soul. And of course, they may say, you know, um, they may not know. They may not know. And let me, let me break it down like this. You read the Bible about Jezebel. Jezebel had her own prophets, right? And the Lord, God, the true living God had his prophets, which he still do. Jezebel still have hers, whether she's called Jezebel today or not. We know that spirit still exists, but there are other spirits out there. So in other words, Jezebel operated under the power of Satan. That was his, that was his agent, that spirit. So Satan has his own prophets. A lot of people are born gifted because that's the gift that God gave them. And if they don't have nobody to cultivate that gift, the enemy will snatch them up before God will. And a lot of times, a lot of those people, they do eventually get out because if God got a call in your life, he, gonna, he may let you operate in that for a while and then bring you out to go and defeat the same, the same, um, um, the same um, practices that you was once operating in. That's God is awesome. He'll do that. Some people are just on assignment and that's that. That's their destination. Um, they're, they're just here being agents for the enemy. 
And that's that. But God will give you, God will gift you. Some people can see in the spirit. They can see um, the dead. They can see angels. They can see demonic things. They can see certain things. And if you don't allow God to cultivate that gift, if you don't become born again with the Holy Spirit so he can, the Holy Spirit can lead and guide you with that gift, you can easily begin to tap into the spirit realm, the supernatural, illegally where you will operate from a soulish realm and even if you see me and see what and, and you have prior knowledge of what i'm going through or what i've done the reason you do because your 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 agent is satan and satan know about my bloodline satan knows my great grandmother satan knows my great grandfather satan knows satan been here since the garden of eden satan's been here in the beginning he was here before man remember he was in heaven with god come on he was Lucifer at the time. And he got kicked out of heaven. And once he did, he became Satan. His name changed. He was stripped from his anointing. So now he does not have an anointing. But what he does, he does, he has power because he is the prince of the earth. He is the, he's the God of this world. He's the prince of the air. He is the God of this, of this world. So he know your background, baby. If you was an alcoholic, he know that. Because he was in the liquor. Whenever you did crazy stuff, you remember how you was persuaded to do certain things. And when you became sober, you didn't realize what you did and why you felt that way and why you wanted to do what you did. But well, Satan was there using his agents, using other people, that, that using spirits to operate on the inside of people to lure you into getting you doing things. You had them thoughts, you'd be like... I don't, this ain't me. Why, why, why was I thinking like that? Because that is influenced by the demonic. That is influenced by Satan. So that's all this is. They are influenced through another entity. And a lot of these tarot card readers, a lot of these palm readers, they will get, oh, tell me about your life. You know, um, tell me about this, or they'll fish for information. That yes, and they'll be able to see certain things and they will pull, like I said, pull from the soulless realm. Your emotions are in your soul. And you can pull on a person's soul. It'll make them cry. It'll make them feel bad about themselves or, or feel bad about a situation. Um, it'll, it'll give you this false hope. You know, um, when you pull on from a soulless realm, you can tell it's from a soulless realm because you may be, you may feel good the first two or three days, and then the next several days, you don't know what hits you. Um, you know how you may be a type of person that you are a giver. You love to give. You love to help people, and if you can't help a certain person. You feel you all the, all of a sudden this feeling come up on you and you feel bad and you feel like oh my god I'm such a hard, horrible horrible person because I didn't help this person. Well, that's the enemy pulling on your soul with these false emotions. You have to, even though you're a believer in Christ, you have to help and do what God say. And God may say don't help that person because I'm working on that person. That person has become too dependent on you and other people and not me. And I need to break something in that person so that person can become so dependent on me. They won't they won't become dependent on man. There no man is here to help them, but I am the ultimate source. But you, on the other hand, over here, because you're such a light, uh, giving person and lighthearted person, you feeling bad. You feel like God is going to be mad at you if you don't do, if you don't help the person. But God is like, I don't want you to. And you over here like, but God, that's the devil pulling on those emotions to make you feel bad. Because guess what? If you pull on them enough, you're going to end up giving to that person and helping that person. And you're going to be in disobedience with God because God told you don't do it. And here come the, here come the enemy voice. Well, you know, you, you're supposed to be a Christian. Ain't that what Christians do? What if you need the help? See, remember, remember whenever you need... See, he'll bring up your past. Come on. He'll bring up your past. Remember when, you know, a year ago when you needed help and somebody helped you? Yeah, but this, this ain't the situation. Come on. You probably weren't the one always depending on me. You probably was depending on God. And God said, I'm going to send somebody to help you. 
But this person probably always depended on man and never depended on God. So God said, no, y'all two different people. And this is two different situations. Come on. So that's how it is when it's a soulless realm. And they pull on, you know, you broke up with your relationship. You know, you go to a, you feeling down, you go to a psychic and, and they tell you, okay, you just broke up with your boyfriend. You just broke up with your girlfriend. You know, you, you dealing with low self-esteem and I know you, you know, you don't feel like you're worth anything. They pull on that. That's where they gather the information. And you may feel good for the moment. But it won't last long. But when you know somebody speaking to you through the Holy Spirit, you'll feel it won't be like a feeling just for a short period of time. You will really feel like, oh, my God, I can I can see clearly now. I'm revived. My soul is revived. So it's a difference. And you will have a peace about it, not a false sense of peace that only lasts for a little bit until something else happens. So that's the difference. So now that we understand what chiromancy is, uh, it's another word for, for palm reading. Now we understand through divination, we understand how they get their information. We understand what source they get their information from. Let's look at a few verses in the Bible of why we should not be operating in these type of practices as believers in Christ. Okay. Let's look at, um, this is Leviticus, the 31st chapter. No, Leviticus, the 19th chapter, the 31st verse. And it says, regard not them that have familiar spirits. Give no regard to mediums um, that have familiar spirits. Neither seek out the wizards to be defiled by them. I am the Lord, your God. Okay. So we see right there. And let's also look at Deuteronomy, the 18th chapter, starting at the ninth verse. And it says, when thou art come into the land, which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. What is abominations? The detestable things. Verse 10 says, there shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his sons or daughters to pass through the fire. In other words, to be burned as an offering to an idol or that use a divination or an observer of times or an enchanter or a witch. And the observer, um, this is through magic. Now, verse 11 says, or a charmer or a consulter with familiar spirits or a wizard or a necromancer. Verse 12 says, for all that do these things are an abomination or detestable things unto the Lord and because of these abominations the Lord thy God do drive them out from before thee verse 13 says thou shalt be perfect with the Lord thy God verse 14 says for these nations which thou shalt possess hearken unto here, um, hearken unto observers of times and unto diviners but as for thee the Lord thy God have not suffered thee so to do so so we see that these these people operate through familiar spirits. These observers of time operate through magic. These enchanters, these witches, these uh, wizards, necromancers. Those necromancers are um, those who consult the dead. Um, you'll see a lot of mediums that do that. And what is a um, a medium? A medium is is saying it's the Latin word for medium is middle. So. You don't go to a medium to consult the dead, to consult your dead loved one or anyone. As you can read, as you see here in Deuteronomy, the Lord forbids that. What did God tell him? He said, for I am your God. And one thing about God, he is a jealous God. And we shall put no other God before him. Wizards and sorcerers, these are the little G's, G-O-D-S, the little gods. They operate under the uh, under their agents for who? For Satan. Okay. These are, in other words, these are Satan prophets, which are false prophets. They may have a gift to prophesy or to uh, speak to you, and it may be the truth, but it's coming from the wrong source. And that's what's important. And you may say, well, I, I still don't see a reason why, if it's the truth, if it's really what's going on with you, what would it hurt? Remember when, when the Lord said, um... You cast out demons in my name. You healed the sick. You did all this, all that. 
but depart from me, you workers of iniquity. So in other words, they can give you a true word. They can tell you something that may be the case. Mm. But it's not of the right source. And because of that, you will not, you won't, you won't prosper from that. You won't prosper from that. They're workers of iniquity. They're, they're, they're workers of the, of the kingdom of darkness. And God does not honor that. So you don't want to find yourself in that place where you're saying, well, as long as they're um, um, accurate about my life and what I'm going through, why would you want to seek that from something that's not accurate? I mean, something that may be accurate, may be gifted, but the source is not of God. Come on. So we read in the word about these type of things and a medium, um, uh, uh, um, those who operate as a medium, it's almost like Jesus is our mediator. Okay. He's the chief intercessor. He is the, he's like, we have to go through Jesus to get to God. Okay. God, I mean, Jesus intercedes for us on our behalf. He's always interceding for us. Lord, give him another chance. Um, you know, Lord, you know, whatever, whatever his conversations with God is about us as an individual. He is that one that we have to go through to get to heaven, that we have to go through to get to God. Well, mediums on the demonic side, they operate, it's almost like Jesus. Um, except for, of course, we know, like I said, this is not of God. You have to go through them if you want to, if you, if they want to conjure up your loved one, that spirit, or if they want to, they want to, you want to talk to the dead, you go through that medium. So anything that puts us in a place like his God, like his Jesus is false. There should be no other guys before, before God. So if we are, if we see these things and are operating in a place where, um, they are acting as if they're God, then the thing about it is, is that that should let us know right there. So how do, how do they get it access? How do, um, the, 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 the psychics and all these individuals, how do they get access? We'll, we'll cover that. But the thing about it is with chiromancy, they pull from a soulish, soulish realm by reading your palm. That's why you don't go get your, your palm read. They look at these, um, when you look at your hand, you have different lines. They look at these lines. Okay, they have the headline, they have the heart line, they have the um the lifeline. Okay, and I'm gonna read what 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 I've did in research of what these um things mean. The headline it says here, it's also known as wisdom line. It reflects a person's psychological and mental makeup, also their in, um intuitive and intellectual abilities. The heart line, they said, it also known as the love line. It indicates a person's emotional state and their connection with others in a relationship. The life line is also misconceived as the line that reflects how long, <clears throat> excuse me, how long a person will live. But it is more to do with life events, relationship with others, changes of circumstances, and their physical and emotional well-being. This is what they use to, to read your poem. Be aware. Because the head, the heart, and the life, those are all gates to your soul. And God is the only one that can give you life. And he's the only one that can take it. He gives life and he, ta he takes life. And the the um the headline deals with wisdom. So uh, the soulless realm deals with your emotions. It deals it deals with your mind. Um, even when you're dealing with the psychic, the psych the psych of a person deals mentally. Deals mentally. So you don't know if these people are putting um, hypnosis on you or anything when you go see them. You don't know that. You don't know what they're doing. Um, the heart line deals with the love line. 
Remember I told you earlier on in the video that me and my friends at school, we were like, okay, this, you're going to get married and you're going to have how many kids you're going to have. They, 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 they do that. That's how, that's what they do in the lifeline. It talk, what it say? It talks about life events, how it reflects how long a person will live. Well, this is my thing. What if you go to, to to someone and get your palm read and they say, Well, you're gonna live ex you know, you're gonna live twenty years. What if God told what if God wants you to live thirty years? You have allowed somebody to come in and speak premature death on you because what God said was thirty, they came and told you you're gonna live twenty years. So you you so you're actually speaking death over you and you're not even realizing it. This stuff is not to play with, y'all. It's real and it's live and well out here in the world operating. It's operating in the body of, of Christ. That's why you have to be careful who lay hands on you. Whether you at church or you or wherever you at, you have to be careful. People will lay hands on you and they're operating through a demonic realm. And they'll pick up stuff from your soul. And they'll play on your emotions and they'll play on your mind. And, and you, you may walk out of a place confused. You may walk out of a place and, and God is what? He's not the author of confusion. Confusion is what? A fiery dart from the what? From the, from who? From the enemy. Um, even chiropractors, you have to be careful who you're, who, who you're, I'm not saying, and let me just, just claim this, put a disclaimer out there. I'm not saying when I talk about certain people in, in, in different fields they work in, I'm not talking about the, the field or the person as a, as a, um, and I'm just letting you know that you have to be careful because chiropractor, they deals with the, that deals with the bag that they're using their hands. So you have to be careful what doctor you go to. You may not know up front that they do it, but they say something to you along the lines of like, wait a minute, this don't fit this this don't feel well with my spirit. And you need to leave. Be careful who you get a massage through. Because they're also using their what? Their hands. And the hands are very powerful. If you know about the the um the gifts of healing, and I'm talking about through the Holy Spirit, the gifts of healing. Your hands may get warm. And God wants you to heal somebody. Um, well, he's going to heal the person. He may want you to lay hands on somebody. Their, their side may be hurting. Their knee may be hurting. And your, your, the whole, your whole right side may get warm. And it may be their right knee on their right on the, their right side that God wants you to lay hands on. And his Holy Spirit is going to um, heal them. So, don't you know the enemy... He's not he's not an originator. He was he counterfeits. So you may you may see someone um come up to you, want to lay hands on you, and they hand may be warm, but it's not from the Holy Spirit, it's from the enemy. So we have to understand that the enemy is not um dumb, he's not stupid. If God tells us to be wise as a serpent, why he say why would he say that if the devil was not wise? He's wise in his own way, but he he knows our bloodline, he knows um our, our ancestors, he knows our secrets, he knows the things that we do behind closed doors that we don't think nobody else knows. Because you're being demonically influenced anyway. So of course he knows. He knows the Bible. He was there in the beginning. He changed one word for Eve and it was a fallen man. He said, you will surely not die. When God said, you will surely die. All it took was one word. That's how crafty he is. But if we stay in the place of God, we'll know how to defeat this enemy. We'll know how to, to see his tactics coming. So everybody will come up to you, want to lay hands on you. You better check. You better test that spirit. And that's another uh, another verse that I want to go to. Um, and that is in First John. <laughs> excuse me, First John, the fourth chapter, the first verse, and it says, "Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try." In other words, test. The spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. 
And this is the spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is in the world. So any spirit that's not of the Lord is an Antichrist spirit. It's not the Antichrist, but like the word said, many of the Antichrist spirits have come in. And these are just anybody that's against the word of God. Any any teachings of God, any teachings of Jesus Christ, they have a spirit of Antichrist. So you say, well, how will I know? How can I test the spirit by the word of God? Well, if you go into a medium, you go into a psychic, you go into a soothsayer. What do we, we read in, in Deuteronomy, we read in Leviticus that God does not, uh, does not, is not pleased of those things. So therefore, if it goes against his word, if it goes against scripture, then that means that's how you test the spirit. If you're if you go um, to someone or and you don't even know that they are um, they they operate in palm reading and y'all talking y'all just having a conversation and they just come up with they you know well Jesus is not we don't I don't believe that Jesus is the only way I love Jesus but I think there are other ways that you can get to um get to God um this is another thing that's going on with the sage well you know I don't see anything wrong with burning sage in your house to to, to route evil spirits out okay um that spirit right there is not of the lord because god never told us jesus never told us to burn sage any type of herb or anything to rout demons out and in the and the anointing all come on even the even the all that that's that we pray over that's not to rout no demon out it's, it's God's anointing that destroys the yoke. That's just a symbol of it. But we don't use that to to um to heal and to do anything like that. And you may say, well, y'all be in church using that kind of stuff, but what is the source behind it? Who is the power source behind it? It's God. It's the Holy Spirit. But you using sage and any and, and these crystals, you know, the new the new age movement deals with the crystals. And you're saying this is the source. This is this is what's doing it. That's the difference. So we just have to be aware of a lot of this new age stuff. So just be very aware of touching hands with everybody. Don't walk around paranoia, y'all. Don't do that. I'm not telling you to do that. But I'm telling you, and this is once again, this type of teaching, I should have said at the beginning of my teaching, um, it's for people who have the Holy Spirit. Because if you don't have the Holy Spirit, this is not for you. You're not going to understand. You're not going to understand it at all. And you're going to think I'm being judgmental. You're going to think, oh, I don't see anything wrong with it because you're not going to understand. It. You don't have the truth, which is the Holy Spirit in you. So you're going to be receptive to anything entering in you. So this is for people who are born again and have the Holy Spirit and, and know Jesus. If, if that's not true, you're not going to understand this teaching. So I want us to understand this, this, this soulish realm that these individuals pull from that's not of God. And we have to make sure that we know the Lord. We don't need someone to read our palm um, to tell us um, to tell us what our life is, how much longer we have to live, who our husband is, or who our, who who your wife may be, how many children you're gonna have. Um, we don't need you. Don't need that. You can go to the Lord about that, and the Lord will release to you what He feel like you need. You can handle right then. Okay, a lot of people go to these palm readers to get a quick answer or get a quick fix. It's like an addiction. I need a quick fix. The alcohol can give you that quick fix and and, 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 and drugs and heroin and meth and all these other drugs can give you this quick fix. But when you come down, you still gonna have the same issue that you got to deal with. So when you go to God about your marriage and how many kids you gonna have and all this, God may not give it to you all at once because he first of all, he wants you to seek him. Don't just come to him wanting answers, uh, wanting him to just tell you everything. Because something is going to take time. It may take years for him to tell you something. Because he know what you can handle right then. And you go to him and, and he he give you every answer that you know right then. You ain't going to seek him no more. You may go back another six months and seek him. If he give, if he tell you everything you need to know right then, sometimes he'll say, wait on me. Sometimes he'll say, be patient. Sometimes he'll say, you know, um, he'll give you a little bit at a time. 
for you to come back and seek him more. Because he want to know, do you really love me? Do you really care about me? But you go to these soothsayers, you go to these psychics, you go to these people reading your palms and, and reading tarot cards. And they prom they got they, they got your whole life in their hand, let them tell it. They know everything about your life. A lot of them charge money. They're only going to tell you a certain amount of information. Depends on how much money you give them. They're going to be looking through a crystal ball, which is looking through a soulless rim. And they tell you one or two things that may be true. And all of a sudden, oh, my God, they know what they're talking about. How did they know that about me? The devil know a lot about you. If you committed adultery with your wife or your husband, the devil know. Because he didn't want to lure you to do it. He was he he influenced your mind. He he shifted the way you think. He shifted your heart. And he's all up in lust. And we know that's that's a big part of, of, of adultery and a lot of things. So he can use it against you. And you go to a soothsayer, you go to a palm reader, and they say, Well, you know, you're not happy in your marriage. Tell me more about that. Oh my God. And you know you just had an affair. You know you slept with somebody other than your spouse the night before. Now all of a sudden they got you. Because the devil know how to rear you in. The devil sitting up there like, yeah, I know you slept with him because uh, I was in the room. I don't want to lure you out of your house to go to, to, to go to that woman or that man house that was not your spouse. And we and, and we're we're so tricked by this type of stuff. Y'all, it's so slick. It's 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 crept into the church and we can't even see it. They get up there behind come on somebody, get up there behind the pulpit and they prophesying and they preach because they got a gift. A gift that God gave them, gifts and callings come without repentance. But it don't mean it's of God. I'm not gonna I don't care about you being a prophet. I'm not gonna receive what you say if it's not of the Lord. I don't care about your gifts. I'm not stuck on that. And that's how we have to get. We have to get over this. Oh, my gosh. He's or she's a prophet of the Lord. And God ain't even claiming them no more. You saying regurgitated words. Or you get. How you not know that that person really is a prophet of the Lord. But because they in disobedience. God not claiming them. But they getting words from other prophets that are of the Lord. Who are in good standing with God. And they, and they getting on Facebook. When they come into your church and they're telling you things that somebody else said, but because that person they have a platform like this prophet do, they they're able to get out there and say it before the one who God really gave it to said it, <laughs> and it come to pass. And all of a sudden, they may be um they may not be what they need to be doing, but they still a prophet of the Lord. Come on, somebody, we got to get out of that. We have to get out of that. And we're so intrigued by it to the point where new age have crept into the church and we don't even know. We don't even see it. And um, I want to touch on these two things and um, I'm going to come to a close. How do some ways of how this palm reading can be um can come can, can you it can be access to you can be through generational it can be through your bloodline you could have had grandparents parents um cousins any you know people who are throughout your bloodline practice this type of stuff and it was never broken off the bloodline yes you got saved yes you got born again in jesus christ but there are some things that still have to be addressed just because you get saved and you go through salvation does not mean that everything is just going to be ate up, cut up, demolished or whatever. Because there's still some things lingering in your bloodline that need to be addressed. Come on. Come on. Um, another thing is illegal doors can be opened knowingly and unknowingly. And I talked about this earlier. It could be certain people laying hands on you that um, operate through this um, type of practice and you didn't even know. And they laid hands on you. They spoke stuff, um, spoke stuff over you that you didn't even know. Through massages, 
even getting pedicures and manicures. I'm not telling you don't do that because I get I get massages, I get manicures and pedicures, and I just pray and cover myself. And if I see or hear anything or discern through the Holy Spirit, if something is wrong with that individual or that place of business I went to, I will get up and I will go. And I won't go. And God has way of, 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 of warning you. So don't be afraid to go get a massage. Don't get, don't be afraid to go get these things. You just have to discern through the Lord. The Lord may show you in a dream. You're like, oh, I have to get up Saturday morning and I'm going to get a massage. And Friday night, God may show you a dream um, and say, or you may have a vision and say, don't go to that place. You may see the name of that business up on, you know, in a vision. You may be on, in your car riding to that to that place, and God, be, and you get sick in your stomach, and you be like, "Why am I sick in my stomach? Why do I get a? Why I got this banging headache?" And you pull up in the driveway, and it's like, "Oh my God, I have a headache that I've never had before." And you need to sit there for a minute and, and ask the Lord what that is. And it may be, I don't want you going in there because a lot of this stuff could be operating. So that's another way to know. Don't don't walk around and be paranoid by anything. Be led by the Holy Spirit with, every, with all you do. And that's why we have to pray. We have to war in the spirit um, throughout our day and whatever we're doing and wherever we're going. So I pray that you all were blessed by this teaching. If the Lord give me something else pertaining to this teaching, um, I will get back on. And... Um, I will release it. There's also something else um, I wanted to give you all. Um, research also says that those who practice chiromancy are generally called palmists, um, hand readers, hand analysis, or chiro, um, chirologists. There are many often conflicting interpretations of various lines and Palmer futures across the various schools of palmistry. So I just wanted to um, just to teach on this because I believe this is something that's here. But I also believe because of the new age movement, it's going to be here even the more. And I believe we're going to see this um, more and more. And I want the body of Christ to be aware and not be in the blind and think that will I don't see anything wrong with it. It's time for the people of God, y'all, the ones God is raising up. We have to teach this stuff. We have to teach on astrology. We have to te teach on um, on um, hypnosis. We have to teach on psychics and mediums, mediums, and we have to teach on necromancers and all this kind of stuff that we have really pushed it aside. I don't know if it's fear of teaching it or whatever. If you know that you're called to this arena, then when you know that you need to get on the wall and you need to pray. And I'm talking, um, pray and, and release this information. I'm talking to myself because I've been had this teaching for a long time. And until I had that dream um, this week, it triggered something to me. And I said, I got to, I got to teach on this because this is something that the body of Christ needs to know. This stuff is real and it's in our churches. And it may not come in the form of a crystal ball. It may not come in the form of somebody you sitting at a chair and they're at a table and they got your hands like this and they're reading your palm. It may not come in that. It may be they land, they 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 stay in the church house ushering. <laughs> Come on, ushering, they up front praying, they walking around praying for everybody. And you be like, that's just sister so-and-so, that's just brother so-and-so. And they pull it from a soulish realm. Come on. They know you done lost a loved one. They know you done, they look on Facebook and look and they follow you. You tell your whole life story on Facebook. They going through Facebook, pulling different things, writing it down, trying to see, you know, patterns of, of your depression, patterns that's causing certain things. And they can speak stuff on you. You may you may just be going through and, ha and having a sad moment that day. And then next thing you know, they come say you've been depressed. And next thing you know, you start feeling depressed. And you weren't even depressed. You just had a moment. We human. <laughs> oh, that's a spirit. Come on, somebody. No, they just had a moment. But because they already operating through the demonic, they're going to put something on you that's not on you. So then you're going to go looking for somebody like them to help you. 
I'm telling you, it's real. It's real. And we have allowed too many people to come into the church practicing this witchcraft stuff. And I believe a lot of saints don't want to talk about it because they don't understand it. And they scared themselves of it. Well, if I talk about it, the warfare that'll come. You in warfare, whether you talk about it or not. Now, if that's not your lane, don't run in it. But if God giving you these type of dreams, if God is giving you these type of prayer assignments, you call to this. And you need to teach it to the body of Christ. Not to the world. They're blinded. They don't understand it because they're not they're not in in, in the Lord yet. They're, they're, they, they're not born again yet. So they're not gonna understand it. But those who are in the body of Christ, and I ain't talking about just those who are in the church house. I'm talking about those who have God's spirit, who has the Holy Spirit. We have to teach this. So I decree and declare, and I speak even over this broadcast, that those who are called to do this end time teaching of what's to come, matter of fact, what's already here, will rise up. Not in their own strength, but rise up in the strength of the Holy Ghost and teach what God is telling us to teach regardless of how it feels regardless of what so I'm going to end this with prayer Father God I just thank you and I bless you, God. And Lord, I ask that you seal this teaching with your blood, that you seal this teaching with your love, that you place a hedge of protection over this teaching, oh God. Lord, I thank you, God, that you are raising up your end time prophets. You raise up your end time evangelists. You raise, I see, you raise up your end time vessels, oh God, to be used mightily in this hour, oh God, that they will give you glory, oh God, as you make their name great, God, that make your your name shall be great. Your name shall be above every name, oh God. In the name of Jesus, oh God, fear. I rebuke fear in the name of Jesus. Fear to walk in the spirit. Fear to teach and preach what you have called your people to preach and teach. Fear from going out to the highways and byways and compelling the people, oh God, to come unto you, oh God. Fear, oh God. Fear of failure, oh God. Fear of doing your will. I decree and declare, oh God, that there shall ever be my see. There shall be a strength upon your people, oh God, a strength up for the end times, oh God, to go forth in the things of you like never before, oh God, hallelujah. And Lord, expose, oh God, expose the witchcraft that's going on in the churches, oh God, going on in the schools, going on, oh God, in the workplaces, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God, expose it, oh God, and pull it up at its root, oh God, in the name of Jesus, help us to be open, oh God, open to what the Holy Ghost is saying and the Holy Ghost is doing, and we shall not walk in, walk in intimidation, we shall not walk in fear, but we shall walk in the power and the authority, oh God, that you have given us. Oh, yeah, my mama, I see even the spirit of religion. I cancel your assignment now in the name of Jesus. That will keep people from learning and studying the things that God has placed in their spirit to study. In the name of Jesus, even the things to release unto God's people for a time such as this. Lord, equip us even more in you. Equip us, oh God, to go forth and do what you have called us to do. I bless you, Father, and I thank you, oh God. And I decree and declare that every soul, oh God, that watches this shall be blessed, oh God, in the name of Jesus, that no word I said will be misconstrued, oh God, and Lord, I bless you and I thank you, oh God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, and I rebuke the enemy out uh, um, from this ministry, oh God, and from anything that I have said, oh God, that's not of you, I repent now and I ask that you forgive me, oh God, let every word that come out of my mouth, oh God, be of you and be pleasing of you, I thank you, Father, and I bless you, and I thank you, God. Y'all be blessed, and it's time to do the work. Amen. God bless.